Welcome to Writing Workshops Simplified with Amanda from SchoolDaysSimplified.com. Hi, replay viewers. Thanks for joining. We are talking about project-based learning today. I missed you all last week. I hope you all had a very happy Thanksgiving, enjoyed your families. Only a few more weeks till our next break. Hi, I'm Amanda from SchoolDaysSimplified.com. I teach sixth grade and I am obsessed with um, teaching writing workshop and reading workshop. I love, um, I'm just so passionate about writing myself. I love writing, um, mostly information writing um, on my website, uh, but I also love um, teaching students uh, narrative writing, information writing, persuasive writing, and just um, getting creative with it and uh, simplifying things for teachers uh, by creating mini lessons that are short and simple and easy to follow. So thank you for joining me. Um, you can get all of this information on my website that I provide today. Uh, I've actually done previous sh shows and have all the information on my website uh, about how to support writers at all levels, how to plan writing units, uh, writing conferences, essentials for writing workshop, and to, oh, and grammar, of course, grammar is super important, so I have information about uh, teaching grammar during your writing workshop, and today we're talking about how to do project-based learning during your writing workshop. So, what is project-based learning? I'd love if you shared in the comments your experience with project-based learning. Do you even know what project-based learning is? Um, have you tried it? Have you been overwhelmed by it? I have. Uh, I actually taught for two years in a charter school that was all about project-based learning. Um, so I have a uh, two years experience and I love it. I absolutely love it. And thank you so much for sharing with followers and trying to get more people in here. Um, I, I think that it's important for all of us to share our ideas and um, I Teach TV Network is a wonderful place to get lots of inspiration for your classroom and so share uh, with your colleagues. Uh, get more people on here. It's it's just incredible. So what is project-based learning? Uh, what's your experience with project-based learning? Um, it looks like I'm losing people. Ooh, I hope my connection's okay. Um, if not, I guess uh, we can, uh, you can watch the replay. So what is project-based learning? Uh, so according to the Buck Institute, which is where you get a lot of information about project-based learning, um, it's kind of Oh, awesome. I'm glad the connection is good. So uh, on my website, I have a link to the Buck Institute website. It's bie.org. So um, it is when students gain knowledge and skills by working for an extended period of time, investigating and responding to an engaging and complex problem, challenge, or question. And I think a lot of people get overwhelmed by project-based learning because they feel like they have to make like this huge difference in their community, um, which is wonderful, but it doesn't always have to be that. Yes. So there's six essentials. Um, it looks like Miss Barry Hill has experience with project-based learning. There is the driving question and um, the student voice and choice. So the first essential is driving question. Second is student voice and, and choice. Third is 21st century skills. Fourth is inquiry and innovation. Fifth is uh, feedback and revision. And then sixth is a publicly presented product. Okay, that sounds all really overwhelming to me. I don't know about you, but to me that sounds like, oh, what does that even all mean? Um, and so I've created this handy dandy post for you. Um, so I talk about uh, driving questions and some driving questions that you can use during writing workshop that involve writing. Um, so this might be hard to see, uh, but I actually have it here for you uh, so you can see. I just kind of came up with these on my own and I'm sure you could come up with a lot of these as well. So here's one of the driving questions I came up with. Yeah, on my blog, schooldayssimplified.com. So um, I actually came up with this one in the middle of class one day. <laughs> How can we create a website to inform our peers about movies, books, music, music, games, and rest, uh, restaurants, etc.? 
how can we inform the leaders of our community about blank? So whatever problem it is. How can we create a science article for National Geographic Kids? How can we get a fantasy book published online? So um, let me read the next one. How can we persuade the principal to extend our recess? How can I publish a hardback book for the school library? Okay, so these are all que driving questions that you can use during writing workshop. And then when you ask your students the driving question, you obviously, you need a hook as well when you're doing PBL, um, but there are need to knows. So, you know, I think teachers, they get really overwhelmed. They're like, okay, how do you get your kids booked? published. Well, give that job to the kids. Have them figure it out. Okay, you research. What do you need to know to publish a book? What do you need to know to, um, how do you create a website? How do you write a review? Um, um, what, who are the leaders of our community? What are the changes that we want in our school? What sorts of things are in a science article? What steps do I need to take to get published in National Geographic Kids? So um, obviously your kids, when you start discussing with them, they're probably not gonna come up with all these need to know. So you're going to need to ask them the driving question and say, okay, well, what do we need to know to, in order to accomplish um, this goal? Um, so uh, let's see, let me go back to my website. So I have this here for, my, for you on my website. Um, driving questions are the first step. Um, and then student voice and choice. So um, during your writing workshop, students have, have lots of, they should have choices about the topics that they get to research and study. So you choose the genre. So are your, your students writing, you know, science articles? Are they writing reviews? And then they pick the topic. So, uh, for example, um, if they're writing reviews, you know, are they really into video games? Are they really into music? Let them pick what they're passionate about. If they're trying to convince the leaders of the community to uh, change something, like the principal or something, pick, let them pick the problem that they're most concerned about or they're most interested in. So student voice and choice is really important. 21st century skills. We keep hearing this over and over again. So students need to be able to collaborate, problem solve, think critically, and use technology. So collaborating, so what you can do is you can pose, you know, the 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 driving question, and then the kids can, you can form kind of coalition groups based on what kids are most interested in. So all the kids that are really interested in um, writing movie reviews can all form a group together to decide, okay, what is that section of our website going to look like? Um, all the kids that are interested in, um, you know, litter on the playground, they can form a group and, um, and work together and collaborate. Um, yeah, coalition groups. That's actually from Lucy Calkins, coalition groups. Um, so I don't, yeah, I'm not the one that came up with that. But uh, so, yeah, so, so all, and then also the teacher needs to teach the skills uh, that necessary to work in a group. So what does it look like when you have a disagreement? What are you going to do? So during your writing mini lessons, you can talk about, you know, you can explicitly teach how to work in a collaborative group, um, how to decide who's going to be the leader and um, things like that and have conversations with your kids about these things during your mini lessons. Um, and then also, uh, thanks for sharing all of your information. I love it. Thank you so much. Um, and I love reading the comments after the broadcast as well. Uh, have your students created a website? Yes. Uh, actually I have, um, I use Google sites, uh, which is a Google app, just like Google drive is an app. And, um, and so uh, my students have individual sites of their own and we have a class review site. We're actually doing that right now. Um, and uh, one of my students that just hates writing and it's like pulling teeth to get him to write, he is just, he is so obsessed with this. He wrote six pages um, uh, reviewing an album uh, music that he loves. Um, and he's just so into it. And he, like, I have kids asking me if they can write more reviews and it, that's what project based learning does. It gets your kids really excited because you're letting them research things they, they are in love with. Um, the website is school days simplified.com. If anyone in the comments wants to put that. Okay. The next essential is inquiry, uh, and innovation. So, you know, your kids need to be constantly asking questions throughout the process. 
Um, and, and those questions are going to guide them into the direction they want to go. Um, so uh, just making sure that you're collecting their questions. Thank you so much for providing that. Collecting their questions and uh, in a place like on a board, a bulletin board or um, in their folder and, you know, getting being the facilitator of learning and, and trying to get, help them to find the resources to find the answers to their questions, which I feel like that's one of the most overwhelming parts of project based learning is um, sometimes, you know, your resources are a little bit lacking. But in this day and age, there is a lot out there. Um, there are lots of places to get information. Um, okay, feedback and revision. So you need to provide uh, rubrics, checklists, contracts, and deadlines. Doesn't that sound familiar? Like, I feel like professionals in the world use those things. And so if we want our students to, um, be successful, we need to provide the things that professionals use all the time and constantly um, refer back to them throughout the project or throughout um, the writing. Um, yeah, real writers, that's the key. Um, I have been using, because um, we're a Google Classroom, so comments, you can comment on Google Docs. And so I use comments a lot to provide feedback to my students. Um, and I know it's really hard to read all of your students' writing um, and to provide comments and feedback, but it's so important. Please do it. And then audience. Okay, there are so many places that you can get audiences. Uh, Kayla Delzer, she is all about um, Twitter and uh, just having her class on Twitter. And I feel like what that's an audience your 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 class can share what they're doing on twitter they can share what they're doing on youtube um they can create a website they can uh contact famous authors there's so many websites children's book authors that have websites and there's a contact the author uh button uh and i want to show you right here national geographic kids so this was super easy i just went to national geographic kids uh look at this and there, I found this page right here. Uh, look at this. National Geographic Kids has a page where uh, you can, it says, thank you for your interest. Here you'll find contact information. Um, oh, writer guidelines. Uh, let's see. Read our guidelines to find out how to submit story ideas to National Geographic Kids. So I just click Writer's Guidelines and they've got like all this stuff about how you can publish on National Geographic Kids. So finding an audience for your students um, is easier than ever these days. Um, yeah. So I have, you know, this is on my website, organizations, you can contact them, leaders in your community, you can contact tax shop owners, mirrors, principals. Um, and then I have some, like, there's really great videos on here, like from Edutopia and uh, the Buck Institute for Education uh, about project-based learning. And there's even some about like the struggles that teachers have when they're trying to implement project-based learning. Um, so yeah, I hope that this was helpful. Does anyone have any questions? I think we have one more minute. Thank you for joining. Thank you for sharing. Um, you can always, you know, share this if you're a replay viewer on Twitter so that more people um, can start learning about this and um, and learning about I Teach TV Network. Uh, thank you so much. I really appreciate the positive feedback and uh, the website that my students made. Um, it is so it's through my district, so it's more like for uh, dis it's not like public public, uh, but definitely check out Kayla Delzer because she does a lot with technology and sharing like with the world. Um, and I'm not quite there yet. I'm more sharing with just our school community. Um, so I will see you next Thursday, four o'clock Pacific Standard Time here. Please come. Please invite people. Thank you for coming today.